The cry in this rune from Breath of the Wild. You all know it, you all love it. It's the Ice Conjuring spell from Link's steampunk iPad. We're going to break down the rune mechanics into four parts, placing the ice tower only on water, collision, materials, and the ice growing animation. I'll press the E key to toggle on and off the cry of this rune, and left click to place a tower when the rune is active. I've created a default third-person template project in UE4. You'll want to open up the character blueprint and create a boolean Cryonis active in two functions, Activate Cryonis and Deactivate Cryonis. In the Activate Cryonis, we need to spawn in our Cryonis actor, so create a new actor called BP Cryonis, add a cube, I scaled mine to 1.25 by 1.25 by 2 to match the size of the ice tower from the game and moved it up 100 units so the pivot point would be at the bottom of the cube rather than the middle. Back in Activate Cryonis, create a spawn actor node and choose BP Cryonis and split the transform. We obviously don't want this spawning at the zero point in our world space, so we'll need a line trace to place it in front of our character. Quick side note, I added 50 units to the Z value of the target offset in my camera boom and changed the target arm length to 400 to match the Breath of the Wild camera a little better. Anyway, if you don't know how line traces work, tough luck because I won't be explaining it in this video to save time, but there are plenty of videos informing you of how they work, or you can join my Discord and send me a message if you're having any trouble, link is in the description. We need a line trace by channel with the start being our camera's world location and the end being our camera's forward vector multiplied by our line's length, which I set to 1000, added to the camera's world location. Still with me? From the out hit of that line trace, get the location and plug that into our spawn transform location. Lastly, let's promote our actor respawn to a variable called Cryonis Tower so we can reference it later in the script. Don't forget to set Cryonis active to true at the end of this. Now in the event graph, we can get our input E. If Cryonis is not active, we'll call Activate Cryonis, and if it is active, we'll call Deactivate Cryonis. So now if we test it, when we press E, the Cryonis actor will spawn in front of us whenever our line trace hits, but if the line trace didn't reach anything, the actor will spawn at the world zero point, but we don't need to worry about that right now. What we do want is to be able to turn it back off and have our Cryonis actor follow our camera out from this point until we deactivate the rune. Go into the deactivate Cryonis function, destroy the actor from the Cryonis tower variable, set the variable to null so it empties, and set Cryonis active to false. So that was relatively easy. Now to make the tower follow our camera, go into our character's event graph, create an event tick with an if statement with the condition being Cryonis active, and if it is, we want to create a new function called Cryonis trace. Open Cryonis trace and create a line trace for objects that would be called at every frame of our Cryonis is active. But CobDev, why was the last line trace a line trace by channel and this one a line trace for objects? Well, I'm glad you asked, Valued Watcher, because this line trace is specifically searching for water objects, whilst the other just needed a location to spawn our actor in. We can copy and paste the camera logic from the other line trace for start and end, but we need to tell the line trace what object to search for. So we'll open up our project settings and search for object and create a new object channel called water with the default response being ignored since most things will pass through our water. We can drag in a plane, set its collision preset to custom, and change the object type to water. If you want, you can also give it a water material. Back in the Cryonis trace, we want to make an array from the object types and add water. After that, break out the out hit and ask if the return value is true. If it is, get our Cryonis tower reference variable and set the actor to the location from the out hit. Test it out now and we should see that it now follows our camera. But ooh, it looks a little janky, so we're going to smooth it out with vector interpolation, so promote the location output to a local variable called target location, set the Cryonis actor location to a v inter 2, get the actor location for current, get the target location for target, pull off delta time and make it an input to the function so we can pull it from the tick, set your interp speed, I like the value of 20. Test it out again, and there we go, it's smooth city. But uh-oh, what if we have a waterfall and we want our Cryonis tower to grow sideways out of it? Let's create another water plane and rotate it sideways. As you can see, this is not how we want the rotation to look at all, so back in the Cryonis trace, we want to set our Cryonis tower actor rotation to the out hit impacts normal make rotation from Z, voila, problem solved. To be honest, I spent half an hour trying to code that in manually before I remembered this node exists. So... Alright, step 104 is done, but we need to mess with the collision a bit because we don't want this tower to have collision before we place it or be able to overlap our ice tower with static meshes, but still interact with physics-based meshes. So, first off, let's go into our cryonis sector and create a box collision that's the same size of our tower. For me, the extent is 62.5, 62.5 by 100, and put it as 100 in the Z. Also set it to no collision. While we're in here, let's also set our ice tower cube to custom collision enabled no collision so it doesn't interact with anything while it's in its preview state. Create a function called check for overlap and call a multi box trace by channel. But CopDev, why are we using a multi box trace instead of a box trace? Or why a box trace at all instead of a line trace? Well, we want to create a box trace the same size of our tower so we make sure that nothing in that box is colliding with static meshes, therefore checking if we have enough room to grow the tower. And we use a multi-box trace instead of a regular box trace because we want to check everything that the box trace overlaps with, not just the first thing that it overlaps with. For the start and the end of the box trace, take our box collision world location, take the scaled box extent for the half size, lastly take our world rotation and plug it into orientation. Out of the out hits, we want to check if any of these are, is a static mesh and not a water mesh. So create a quick local boolean called overlapping objects, call a for loop with a break, out of the array element, check if the hit component's object type does not equal water, and if so, set overlapping objects to true and break the loop. 
We can break it because we know it already collides with at least one non-water static mesh, so there's no need to keep looping. Off completed, create a return node with an output of no collision, which is a boolean, and plug in the not of our overlapping objects. If we don't overlap with anything, this variable will stay as false, so we know we can still place our tower. We're done with this function for now, but we need two events in our event graph called enable building and disable building. Let's call our check for overlap function at the end of our cryonis trace in our third person character and create an if statement from the output. If it's true, we'll call our cryonis actor's enable building. If it's false, disable building. For now, just create a boolean in our cryonis actor called can place and check it to true on enable and false on disable. We'll use this boolean to dictate whether we can place the tower or not when we press the left mouse button. We'll need a function for when we do spawn a tower, so create one called spawn tower with an input for transform, check if can place is true, spawn actor by class of type bp cryonis. Now when we spawn this, we don't want to have the same preview settings, so we'll have to create another function for this actor called on spawned and call it at the end of spawn tower and make sure the target is plugged into the spawn actor node. In on spawned, we want to have our cube have collision, so now set collision enabled to collision enabled, and that's all we'll do for the time being. We want to call the spawn tower function when we left click, so go back into the third person character's event graph and create left mouse button input. Check if cryonis is active and call spawn tower from the cryonis tower variable reference with the transforms being the variable's actor transform. Now when we click when the cryonis is active, it'll place a tower there. We're halfway done. It's kind of hard to tell when you can and when you can't place the cryonis tower, so let's set up some materials. I created this stylized ice material really quick that I'll apply to the cube so it starts to plain white. The material ended up looking pretty good and it was relatively simple to make, so leave a comment down below if you'd like to see a tutorial for it. Anyway, I also created two quick materials for when the placement is enabled for versus when it's disabled. This one's nothing special, so here's a quick screenshot if you want to copy it. So I want the disabled slash enabled materials to toggle whether you can place the cryonis tower or not, and the ice material for when you actually do place it. And while we're at it, I want to disable visibility of the tower when our land trace hits nothing so we don't see it interpolate over time to the zero point. So back in the cryonis trace, before setting the target location, we'll set the visibility of our cryonis tower's default scene root to true and check propagate to children so it affects our cube as well. Then in cryonis actors enable and disable building, I want to set the material to the ones I created, so off of enabled building, I'm setting the material to mi cryonis enable, which is a material instance of the one I had the screenshot for, and for the disable, do the same thing, but with mi cryonis disable. But one of these two events is still being called every single frame our cryonis is activate, and we don't need them to update the material. And we don't need them to update the material. And we don't need them to update the material once a frame. So before anything, create a sequence and then a do once node, so it only calls this once for both events. We need to reset the do once node once the other event is called. So off the then one in the sequence, reset the other functions do once node. Once we place the tower, I want it to have its ice material, so in the components tab, set the box's default material to your ice material. Now if we test it, it's a lot more clear what's happening. Alrighty, last step, the ice actually growing out of the water. I went into Blender and created a mesh with two shape keys so it interpolates between at the beginning and the fully grown state. I exported that as an animation, which means I had to import the mesh as a skeletal mesh with the morph targets toggled on. With the import animations also checked, this should import the skeletal mesh, the animation, the skeleton, and the physics asset. We don't need to touch the skeleton or the physics asset for this tutorial. If I open up the mesh, I can set the default material to the ice material and play with the shape key slider on the right, which are called morph targets in Unreal Engine. If you don't want to create your own asset for this, I have a link in the description where you can download one from my website, copdev.com. In BP Cryonis, let's add a skeletal mesh and add our ice tower to it. We can delete our cube now since it was just a placeholder before the animations. We have one reference to our cube and our blueprints, so it should complain about that, but it's something we'll come back to in a minute. While we're previewing a tower, I want the animation loop when placement is enabled and to display a static full tower when the placement is disabled. So off the enable building event, get the skeletal mesh, play animation, cry on this ice animation, and check looping. We also want to clear morph targets so they don't get in the way of the animation. Off the disabled building, we want to stop all the animations, set the morph target to zero so it displays a fully grown tower. Make sure you type the morph target name exactly the way it's spelled in the mesh. In Blender, I called it short. Also, uncheck remove zero weight. Testing it now shows our preview tower to be a bit more alive and accurate to how it was in Breath of the Wild. We also want the animation to play when we place the tower, so in on spawn, take the skeletal mesh and play animation again, but this time don't set looping to true. Now things are really starting to look like the final effect, except we have a collision issue. The easiest fix for this is in the Cryonis actor, turn on no collision for skeletal mesh and duplicate our box collision and call this one collision. This collision needs to start in the size of the tower's small state for the my mesh, that's a Z extent of 8.65. Also update the Z position to 8.65. Change the collision preset to no collision. Now in the on spawn function, we want to plug in our collision to that set collision enabled node that gave us trouble when we deleted the cube. Lastly, we just need to expand the collision box with the skeletal mesh, so we created a new event called expand collision and created a timeline with the length that about matches my animation's length at about two seconds. We'll create a float track named alpha and create the key time zero, value zero, to time two, value one, with an auto interpolation. From the update of that timeline, I got the collision box and opened the set box extent node, split the struct pin, got the box extent, split that as well, plugged x into x and y into y, since those will be unchanging. 
Z, however, I plugged an alert that went from the original box extent Z to a value of 100, which I know is the height of my tower. I plugged the alpha into the alpha and also set the box collision's relative location Z value to the same LERP output. Now the collision will scale with the ice tower. Place that event at the end of our onspawn function, and if we uncheck hidden in game for the collision, we can see it in action. Last but not least, let's make sure it can still interact with physics objects, so go into our Cryonis Actors check for overlaps function, and off hit component ask is simulating physics, and plug that into the not value of the boolean into the overlapping objects boolean. And with all that, here's the final result. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and a comment. Let me know what other kind of content you'd like to see. And I can't say when, but I've got an exciting announcement coming up soon. So if that tickles your fancy, go ahead and subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.